Hi folks, welcome back to my place, Homestead Aquarius. Right here in the middle of winter, I'm out here in my aquaponics tank with a pot, old nasty pot. It's a pretty good pot, but I've dedicated it to use outdoors a while back. I could probably clean it up and use it in other ways. I wanted to go back to some basics today. When I saw on the video that I made yesterday of uh, had a tadpole showed up, I wanted to see if maybe I could see one of them little, oh, look at here. I wanted to see if we could get a tadpole episode in here in the middle of winter. And what I'm doing is taking out this salvinia. It's an invasive water plant that was brought in from Africa where it is happy to live but it was brought over in some bilge pumps bilge pumps or whatever in a in probably a barge or a container vessel and it got loose in American waterways and salvinia like I said it's an invasive aquatic species and it's playing all kinds of havoc down south here, it's too cold for it. And we didn't get a good look at those tadpoles in the other video, but look at here. Look at here. Can you see them in there? All those little tadpoles. Still doing fine in here. I see different species in here. See that big one right there and that little one? That's two different kinds. Tadpoles. Let's pour them back in here. But, uh, Tadpoles, they will stop their metamorphosis. They'll stop growing into frogs uh, during the winter. If they don't make it to frog stage, their metamorphosis will just shut down, and they'll just hang out for the winter as a tadpole and then wait until it gets warmer. All right, there we go. Back in the pond. Ha ha! Y'all thought y'all was going to see the last of the tadpoles for a while. Well, maybe I'll show you some later. But for, day, for today, here's your daily frog episode. There's your some fresh tadpole action. Now, let's get on to this pot thing. See what we're going to do. Now, what I got here is one of my little cayenne peppers that John at Will It Grow helped me grow this year. I've, go, I've grown peppers several times, but never had as much success as, it, uh, as I did this year um, because what I was doing was, was making my soil too hot. I was burning them up, you know, thinking I was doing a good thing as a, as a beginner gardener over the years, years ago. And um, so John at Will It Grow helped me grow my peppers this year. This is one of them, and I'm going to save the seeds out. Now, what's this got to do with the pot? Well, today is National Pepper Pot Day, right? So I got my pepper here, and I got my pot. <laughs> pepper pot. Well, what, what is pepper pot? You know, I've heard about it. It's actually a dish, okay? I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. And uh, I'm going to show you real quick, like if I can, how to save your pepper seeds. It's a very simple thing. Um, I'm going to show you how I do it. Got to get Wilson out of the way here. Wilson, you get out of the way. Now, a friend of mine, a subscriber, lady with a, a nice channel on her own. Her name is Gail Southern Living. She asked me what was Wilson's hair made out of. Well, Wilson's hair is made out of Egyptian walking onions. There's another thing from Africa right there. I guess this is going to be a big African special, you know. Me being a so-called white man, you know, mixed heritage, a mutt here in America, all kind of stuff in me, you know, I can do that too. I can share with you some history. Well, let's see here. I said I was going to show you how to save some seeds and tell you about Pepper Pot Day. So, um, Pepper Pot is 
an African dish. Now, I'm not sure what they called it um, in Africa hundreds of years ago. Um, it's like a stew. It's like a soup that is made typically nowadays from the most humble of ingredients. When um, in Africa, uh, they would have used um, the best cuts of meat probably to go into the stews or whatever, but they would also use the leftovers and make use of whatever else that they had available. Um, but it's a unique dish that actually helped us win the Revolutionary War. That's right. Um, so the pepper pot recipe and, and the many different ways that people would make it, um, that, that fed them and fed the folks in Africa. Now, whenever slavery came around, there were many, many folks captured and brought to the Caribbean. That's the first place. And once they got there, they had the ingredients that they could grow in the ground. They were allowed to garden, you know, on, and, and subside on the most meager of um, food. They were given the, the offcuts of the animals to keep them alive, the meat, the necks, the hocks, um, organ meats. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the recipes for pepper pot comes from uh, the use of tripe. All right, or anything else that's that's not the best cuts of meat. It is one of the dishes that so many people, regardless of your color or your history, it goes into that rich melting pot of subsistence meals that stick with us, soul food from around the world, regardless of where you're from. This was one of the great ones. It worked its way up from the Caribbean and uh, made its way up the eastern seaboard. We're talking about hundreds of years ago, hundreds of years ago, hundreds of years before America became a nation. It was a spicy meal, a meal that was easily cooked, um, and, and you could do a lot of it uh, at one time and feed a lot of people. You can imagine how a hot, spicy, nutritious meal um, would really come in handy back in the uh, colonial days of America, right? And as the story goes, the meal of the pepper pot that worked its way up the eastern seaboard to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and it became a favorite of a young uh, George Washington, okay? And in the White House, and, and, and even in the days whenever he was in the presidency uh, in the White House, right? Now, who were most of the chefs, most of the cooks there uh, in the White House? Well, that's going to be slaves. They had a lot of slaves making the meals. Uh, the pepper pot was, can, I'm getting my hands all up in this camera, and I apologize. Can I go over here from the side, maybe, and show you this wonderful seed-saving action? Um, there was a lot of slave cuisine that was loved by many people uh, of, of all different nationalities. Now, the, 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 the Battle of Valley Forge was one of, we've seen so many images of the, um, uh, the the brave volunteers going up against the con you know the Continental Army going up against the uh, the English when we were fighting for our independence from Mother England we wanted to have our freedom and in the Valley of the Battle of Valley Forge was very cold um, you can do you some research on that and those troops were in very dire need of some type of morale booster to help get them through, okay? So George Washington had the idea that um, he was going to get them uh, a big supply of this wonderful meal, a hot, nutritious meal in a cold temperature. 
and it boosted the morale of the troops. This hot, nutritious meal helped them win the Battle of, Va Battle of Valley Forge. They call the pepper pot, they call it the, um, the soup or the meal that um, won the war. That's how, that's how famous it is, the soup that won the war. That's, that's pretty special there. Now, I like to learn about the connections through history. And so we learn about the connections of um, the, 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 the ladies in the Caribbean, the slaves, the people in Africa, and a time-honored meal there that came here to America and helped us all gain our independence and freedom from England. We celebrate our um, birth of our nation on July 4th, but in truth, maybe it came as a result of one of these connections. Now, the pepper pot is made with, you know, whatever you want to make it with as far as peppers goes, but um, there's a lot of recipes out there that you can find, um, very, very good ones, a lot of them. And I would encourage you to go find some of those. Now, I didn't find out about this on my own. It's another one of those connections that, that I've made through the years. And it happens to be Granny Marino. She was talking about that this morning, how it's National Pepper Pot Day. And when she said that, I was like, well, yeah, Pepper Pots. That's, uh, yeah, Tony Stark's girlfriend. Yeah, beautiful redheaded lady. But uh, it's, not, it's not Pepper Pot's day. It's Pepper Pot. And it looks like a wonderful thing. You've got meat, lots of good vegetables in there. Um, and, of course, your peppers. Now, these, uh, when I make mine, it's going to be with uh, cayenne pepper. I love me some cayenne pepper. I want to grow a bunch of it. All right? So, this, these that I have been opening up here, these are dried on the plant. One of the plants, that, one of the Tabasco, I mean, uh, to, um, what do you call it? Cayenne pepper that I've got overwintering in my uh, RV, right, in the house. And what you want to do when you're saving your peppers, your peppers, if you're going to save them for seed, you need to make sure that you get the ripe ones, all right? This one is only partially ripe. It's green. Still a little bit of green there and a little bit of ripeness there. But those seeds that are inside this are not as fully developed as these, right? With peppers and, and just about any type of fruit, uh, you want ripe seeds. They've had a chance to get all the sugars, all the nutrition into them to survive and create a plant one day soon. All right. Now, that one was pretty dry. Um this one here is one of my other little bird's beak peppers. I'm just going to take him. And uh, it's another one of the gifts from John. I'm just going to go through my fingers here and bust it out. This one has still got some wetness to it. I better make sure I don't touch my eye here. All you've got to do, you get you your ripe peppers, open them up, and, and get the seeds out. And you won't be having to hold a camera in your hand while you do it. So it'll be easier for you. Get those seeds out of there. Spread them out on a paper towel. And give them a place in a uh, um, nice little dry area inside your house so that they can dry out. Don't put them in the hot sun. I was watching um, uh, The Morning Gardener. Uh, earlier today, and he was talking about that. Let's see. No, it was not the morning. I was watching The Morning Gardener, but I was watching um, uh, In Your Yard Homestead talking about that. Um, that's a channel in Australia. Uh, a man named Josh has that channel. He's a very good gardener, and he's gr growing things in a place that's very, very dry and hot. And uh, that was one of the things that he recommended. You don't dry your seeds in the hot sun. 
Um, and that's primarily because, well, one thing is the, um, the UV radiation, the UV damage, the light can damage your seeds. So it's very simple to save out pepper seeds. There are so many um, videos on how to do it. It's just as simple as what I've done here. Uh, I am going to uh, save these and then see what I can get to grow this spring. Got to dry these out, these little bird's beak peppers. But I wanted to share all that with you. Now, um, this will be the first year that I hope to be successful to save out my seeds and use them to grow new plants, right? And so I brushed up a little bit and I found a video from a man named Kang Star. And um, he has got a great channel. He's, he's, he's got about 200,000 subscribers and it's for a reason. He's an excellent gardener and he has got uh, a very good detailed video on how to save your seeds and he offers it up in a you know a, a, a different way than what I'm doing here because that's not the primary focus so I'll leave a link in the description to his video and you can find it and you can get more tips from him go over and check him out and subscribe um, I've recently discovered him and he has got some great gardening content um, let's see what else did I want to do we talked about saving seeds. It's just so easy. These are going to go inside the house and, um, and, 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 and get dried out and be ready to go in the spring. Um, what I wanted to do, one thing that I noticed about pepper pot right away, the ingredients in it, in the traditional um, Caribbean meal tradition, right? The traditional meal is very keto, very keto. Um, so I would like to issue a challenge to someone I've mentioned before. I'd like to see Voon Chow make this. Voon, you can consider this if you want to, a subscriber uh, request. I would love to see you cook uh, a pepper pot. I think you'll enjoy the meal. You may have already done a video on it. If you haven't, I'd love to see you make it and share it with the people. On uh, Now today, this day is National Pepper Pot Day. So it's a little too late <laughs> for you to make one today. But uh, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like for you to come in and do that. Any As far as that goes, anyone else that would like to do this and share it, let's go with the hashtag... Uh, pepper pot challenge if you're one of these cooks out there like Voon Chow or uh, let's see Ariel Tanjirwadi if I haven't damaged your name too much there Ariel down in Australia if you would like to jump in and take this pepper pot challenge I'd like for you to do that too um, but anybody that's out there that wants to do this make a video of how you make pepper pot um, I'd like to see a keto version of it um, but you make how, whatever video that you want and, uh, make you a pepper pot in honor of this great dish and the rich history of the people of Africa and the connections that were made through their hardship toward the winning of freedom for our country, for all of us, regardless of who we are what color our skin is, who we worship, whatever it is. That's amazing to think that a battle so incredibly important to us all here in the United States and throughout the world, if you want to know the truth, that our history was made from such a simple, humble dish as the dish that I've seen today. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed today and this long-winded old hippie. Uh, hippie. <laughs> I'm part hippie. I'm part hippie and I'm part hillbilly. This long-winded old hillbilly up here in Alabama. Um, you know, give me a thumbs up or whatever. You know, I appreciate y'all watching and um, hope to see something fun come out of this and some good recipes for people to watch. So 
until next time, um, I wish you have a good day and uh, happy new year to everybody. If I don't see you again before that, from Homestead Aquarius, me and the tadpoles, John, um, Wilson, I'm going to wish you farewell. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. One more thing. I brought this out here to give y'all a look. I forgot to put it in here. That's another one of my little sweet potatoes that I've got inside the house, just sitting there growing. This is actually the one that I teased uh, Mark, Arkansas woodcutter, with early in the spring. I said, like, you better watch out or something like that. Well, that same potato, that same sweet potato, is still growing in this cup. Still doing quite well. I already made slips off of it once this year and gave many of them away. And it's getting ready to go. Shed Wars 21, baby. It starts here in December. Bye, y'all.